So when it comes to lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries, people will call them lithium, but there's various flavors to lithium batteries. Um, they're basically, I mean, it's a long name, but it's LIFO4 and short LFP. Uh, those batteries are, it's part of a toolkit. You know, there's no such thing as a bad battery per se, and there's no such thing as a perfect battery for everyone, right? There's a battery for everyone's budget, and budget is one part of the equation, but another part of the equation is also energy density, right? So a lithium battery will give you way more energy density, i.e. for a physical size and weight, you're gonna have more usable amp hour capacity of a lithium battery than you will of an AGM battery, and certainly of a flooded lead acid battery. Now, that's great. You'll also get way more cycles out of that battery. So if your boat, for example, is a boat that is your ultimate boat, there is no end in sight to your ownership of that boat. You're committed to that boat for your life. Then a lithium iron phosphate battery makes sense because those projected 2,000 cycles, the 5,000 cycles, are gonna come and benefit you. But you've gotta remember, you're paying that cost upfront. So you need to make sure that all these improvements that you're gonna do on your boat are gonna benefit you. So generally what I use as a way to qualify an owner is to say to them, you know, what's your projection? Is this your last boat? Are you gonna be on this boat for a long time? If you are, it makes the money component less important because they see a longer ROI, return on their investment. So that would be one is, how long are you gonna own the boat? Because those cycles are gonna come in handy. The other one is some owners don't have space for batteries. They just don't. For whatever reason, they just don't have space and they need more energy than they can fit. So a lithium iron phosphate battery is perfect for that because it comes in a more compact size. But that's not something that everyone needs. So that would be another variable, compact, is really good for lithium ion fo iron phosphate. Now the other thing that's essential to think about is that you can't just simply put those lithium batteries on your boat and walk away, right? I mean, this is not for the weak of heart. If you want lithium and it's the right battery for you because of various reasons, you're gonna need to end up making sure that your chargers, your alternators, and everything else on the boat is tailored to be able to handle that. It's not a plug and play. You don't just change a flooded lead acid battery and go with a lithium iron phosphate battery and just walk away. You can't, it's absolutely not. Because the big problem with those batteries, which is their biggest advantage, is that they don't really go through absorption. I mean, they kinda do, but they don't. So they'll go from 20% to almost 100% at full throttle. And you can give them some batteries three times their capacity as a charge rate. Flooded lead acid batteries are a quarter of capacity as their charge rate, as a theoretical limit. These are three times, so that's 12 times more of a charge acceptance rate than flooded. Meaning the alternator is never going to be told to stop outputting. It'll take it right to the end. The chargers will go right to the end. Inverter chargers, right to the end. And so you need to make sure that you have chargers, alternators, and everything else that can handle giving that amount of current continuously to that battery because that battery when it's hungry it's hungry and it won't stop until it doesn't need anything else so those are kind of the variables that you need to consider when you're making a decision if you're going to go with those lithium iron phosphate batteries